I'm Dr. Jessica Mason. This video is going to review the rare and potentially life-saving procedure of a cranial burr hole. We're going to review the equipment and then walk you through the procedure step by step. Let's start with the equipment. You'll need hair trimmers or a razor, skin prep, a sterile drape, a scalpel, a self-retaining scalp retractor, your trephination device, shown here is a hand drill and also a Hudson brace, which is how this procedure will be demonstrated, a skin stapler, drain, and gauze. Use the CT scanner for site selection. Also, measure the depth to the inner table of the skull and set your stopper to this maximum depth. If no CT is available and you must proceed blindly, it's two centimeters anterior, two centimeters superior to the tragus on the ipsilateral side as the blown pupil. Palpate the superficial temporal artery and stay anterior to it, though it is very likely you will transect the frontal branch, so be prepared to manage bleeding. For the same reason, it also helps to inject lidocaine with epinephrine. Prep and drape your site and now make a 3 to 5 centimeter incision all the way down to bone. Insert the scalp retractor to expose the skull. The skull has three layers. The outer and inner tables are compact bone and sandwiched between them is spongy bone. Now take a deep breath because we're ready to trephinate. You may have an electrical drill or a manual drill like the one shown here which actually has a hand crank. This one also has a stopper that you can set to a maximum depth. So if you have a CT scan, measure the depth to get through the inner table of the skull and set the stopper accordingly. This video demonstrates the Hudson brace and in this case we first attach the perforator bit. Once you get through the outer table of the skull, you switch to the conical burr. To use the Hudson brace, you apply a little bit of pressure and then you rotate to drill. Start slow so that you don't slip and it's important to have an assistant to help stabilize the head. This should become a smooth and continuous motion. Well, as smooth as it can be with the adrenaline that's probably pumping through your veins. If your tools are sharp, this might go quite quickly. Apply a little bit of constant pressure as you drill. You can stop and check where you're at as frequently as you need to make yourself feel comfortable. You can see here we're still in the smooth outer table of the skull. With the Hudson brace, you're going to start to get this jerking motion that you'll feel as you get into the inner table of the skull. And you can see that here. This layer is much softer. So now it's time to switch to the conical burr. This will now clean out the area and expose the dura mater underneath. The non-rotating hand should provide counter torque and resist forward motion of the drill so you don't plunge it into brain parenchyma. This soft layer that you see here, that's the dura. So if there was an epidural hematoma, it could be evacuated at this point. And you can use irrigation and suction to remove the clot. If you're attempting this procedure for a subdural hematoma, we need to go one step further. Alternatively, if you thought it was an epidural, but you don't see blood at this point, we need to open up the dura. Use the scalpel to make a three-sided incision, so a window in the dura, or this can be done with an X-shaped incision. With the subdural hemorrhage exposed, you can irrigate and you can blot, but do not suction because you might rip some of those little bridging veins and worsen the bleeding. Now you're pretty much done. Our neurosurgeon peer reviewer recommended that you leave a drain in place and staple the skin closed for hemostasis during transfer. If you've attempted this procedure blindly because you didn't have a CT scan and you did not find the hematoma, you're going to repeat that temporal burr hole, but on the contralateral side. Now, if you still didn't drain the hematoma, go back to the ipsilateral side and for a frontal burr hole, you start midline to the pupil, and you go back to the coronal suture, just about one centimeter anterior to it. If you still didn't drain the hematoma, you can attempt a parietal burr hole. Start at the external auditory meatus and go about three centimeters superior and four centimeters posterior. So you're over the parietal eminence. 